In today's show, we're looking ahead to Friday in the NBA. Some streaming options, what we're watching for, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Fangio Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit Fangio.com slash Locked On today to get started. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. So I was really sort of debating how to do this show, looking ahead to Friday, because there's going to be absolute nonsense happening. We're going to have random things go on like today, where the Magic said, nah, we're just going to sit all of our starters, which wasn't mentioned at all yesterday on the injury report. So what I think it's important to do is to talk about where teams sit, what their motivations might be, so we can get some sort of an idea of what is possibly going on and what they've been doing. So, in saying all that... Let's get it on, Gilly. (laughs) All right. This is a game between two shit teams. It is the Rockets and the Hornets. Interestingly, the Hornets are absolutely locked in. They cannot move. They are the 27th best team. They have the fourth best lottery odds, and they cannot move from there. Yet, they are still sitting everybody. There is going to be no Kelly Oubre, no Gordon Haywood, no Terry Rozier... Of course, no Lamelo Ball, um, no PJ Washington. These guys are all done, right? They're, they're finished for the year. They're continuing to do the Hornets thing and list Dennis Smith Jr. questionable every game. I'm going to guess that he's not going to play, but I don't know. And then Mark Williams is listed as probable with an ankle issue. Cool. Well, hi, Mark. He was also listed probable last game and then was ruled out and then didn't play. But was that part of the stupid three-man center rotation? I don't know. We will never know. So I think that Mark Williams will play and start in these next two games, but absolutely anything's on the table. The Rockets, well, they're either going to have the second or third best lottery odds. They're either 28th or 29th in the standings. And they're not really sitting anybody. The only guy that's out is Jay Sean Tate. That probably makes them a better team. He's the only guy that's out, and I'm not expecting anything else to change. They're giving good minutes to all their players. Um, on the Houston side, I do want to watch just the development of these guys. Jalen Green, who continues to be a punt field goal guy, but... Has been a little bit better down the stretch. And then Tari Eason. Because last game, KJ Martin played only 27 minutes and Eason played 33. Eason had struggled the previous games, 22, 24, 25 minutes, but he got back to 33 minutes. That is an interesting change. I don't know that that's what they're going to do as we move forward. Eason's a significantly better permanent fantasy producer than KJ Martin. So if their minutes actually get close to each other, then we are really looking at Eason as a solid option. For the Hornets, Teo Maladon. Um, that is relatively dependent on Dennis Smith, but Maladon has been really solid recently and is worth worth a look. And then the other one is Kai Jones, who will come off the bench behind the God of Hammers, JT Thor, but he could be the backup center as well, or he could just exclusively be the backup power forward. When we thought we had a firm grasp on what they were doing at center, that's sort of been mixed up by the Washington injury. I think Jones is going to get you know, 20 minutes or so, and he can be useful. But if he plays 28, then he's a lot more useful than he is playing 17. Heat and the Wizards. This is a back-to-back for Miami coming in off that game on Thursday. Um, The Heat are basically locked in at 7. They're not 100% locked in, but they've got like a 97% chance they'll be the 7 seed. And I believe if they just get a win in one of these two games, they will lock in. And they play the Sixers, who are probably going to rest guys on Thursday. And they play the Wizards, who are trying to lose. The Wizards are in this group of teams where probably the most interest is in terms of the tanking teams. It's Portland, it's Washington, it's Indiana. It's also now Orlando with a little bit of Utah on the side. All of those teams could finish anywhere from the 23rd to 26th worst record. They can So that's 5th and ninth in lottery odds. So every loss is important there. At the moment, Portland and Washington are tied for the fifth best odds. Follow, sorry, Port, uh, Portland's fifth, and then Washington and Indiana are tied for the sixth best odds, which would be determined on a coin flip, and then Orlando and Utah behind them. But you can't slip up. And by slip up, I mean you can't win a game if you're one of these teams because your yeah, Orlando's resting blokes, Utah's sitting guys, so they, they will catch you. 
they are like a half game behind Orlando. So if Washington wins or Indiana wins and Orlando loses, Orlando jumps ahead of those teams. So the Washington Wizards are going to sit, guys. Um, we do want to watch John Davis because they are pumping a lot of minutes into him. We're, we're under the assumption that uh, Beal, Kuzma, Porzingis, Morris, Avdia, that they're all out. Interestingly, they haven't listed d Wright on the injury report. So he will, theoretically, likely return. We'll see how many minutes they give him uh, and how much or how important that is. Or Because he's obviously a good player. Like, will he get in there? Will he play? What does that mean for someone like a Jordan Goodwin? Um, I think Goodwin is still an interesting option because I don't think they're, they're going to do what I reckon they do with Gafford and that's start d Wright and play him 20 minutes. But he is, he's off the injury report and he is available to play. I do want to watch John Davis. I think he's going to start regardless. I also want to watch Jay Huff, who's played 27 and 30 minutes. Not because of injury, not because of foul trouble, because they just limit Gaffer. They go, Gafford, you can do your thing in 20 minutes. And I'm going to bring the Huffster in after that to do his thing. And that's what they've been running with. With the Heat, Lowry would probably miss one of the games. I believe he is questionable for Thursday's game. Uh, he's going to sit one off Thursday or Friday. So if he's in Thursday, then you can be sure that he is going to sit on Friday. The next game between two tanking teams is the Pistons and the Pacers. The Pistons are absolutely locked in. They have the worst record in the NBA. And uh, they stink. It's simple as that. They lose every single game. But the team that needs to lose games is going to be the Pacers because they are in that same mix of that 5-9 to nine lottery odds where they can't afford a win. But will they be able to out-tank this team? The Pistons are allegedly bringing back Marvin Bagley. He is listed probable. So are they going... uh, I will lose my mind. I know it doesn't matter in game 81. But if they bring Marvin Bagley back to start him next to Marvin Bagley the fourth and bench Jalen Duran, well, this team can just... uh, What what can they do? Something terrible. Something absolutely terrible. And then that would mean I would wish every negative thing on this franchise forever. And I know it doesn't matter, but it is also just continual stupid process and and as a fan, you should have no faith in anything this organization does at this point. What writing on it in a hypothetical scenario where my opinion doesn't matter? Well, that's not hypothetical. That's the actual reality. My opinion doesn't matter. We'll see what they do. But Bagley is coming back. They've got Livers and Omarui listed as questionable. Um, both of those guys have been starting. Livers started, then Omarui replaced him, and they're both questionable here. But I just think they're going to start Bagley. Imagine they go Bagley, Duran, Wiseman as the 3-4-5. That would be just humor. Absolute humor. Last game, RJ Barrett played 34 minutes. That was largely because Livers, Bagley, and Omarui were out. So that's to play RJ at the three. He did well for the first time in four years. We'll see if he's any use. I doubt that he is. But I also want to watch the passport legend himself, Jalen Duran. He's been really good. Now, I am absolutely shit scared of what they're going to do with Bagley back, but I do want to watch what he does. For the Pacers, Halliburton is out again. Miles Turner is questionable. Um, he is so questionable that they've gone with Jalen Smith and TJ McConnell are playing well. We've got to list them questionable as well. That to me, in a game against the Pistons that they cannot afford to win, means that Smith and McConnell are out. They are there is they're officially questionable. Turner, Smith, and McConnell are all officially questionable. I will I will honestly start an OnlyFans and it will just be me um I, I, something rude. That's what I'll do. You get me money, of course, if those guys play. Or if Miles Turner's, Turner plays in particular. Of course, I'm not going to do that. But there's no chance. These guys, there's no way they're playing. Questionable, huh? Uh, questionable. Sam and Buddy Hill will play five minutes. So, in saying all of that, what are they going to do? We've got to watch Isaiah Jackson because it's going to be him and Daniel Tice, I guess. You're going to have 30 minutes of Gabe York. It's going to be a disaster. But Andrew Nempard's going to get a big opportunity, but he might end up being too good. And we get George Hill and Gabe York getting minutes. This is going to be disgusting from the Pacers. You are going to see unbelievable shit going on. And there'll be Jordan Water taking every shot in the world. Nempard might generate a lot of assists, but it is going to be a mess, a absolute mess of rotations. And yeah, prepare. Today's episode is brought to you by the all-new Nissan Aria. And Nissan's Aria also brings you Nissan's most electric player of the week. The all-new all-electric 2023 Nissan Aria brings you that. The player of the week is not Jokic. It's not Embiid. It's actually Jim Butler, who's averaging 31 points, 
36 minutes, 10 assists, and two and a half steals over the last week. Or maybe it's Donovan Mitchell averaging 42 points. I'm going to give it to Jim Butler because those 10 assists per game have been pretty good. He has... Yeah, Butler's a weird player where we go, oh, he's going to get injured a lot, but he hasn't actually down the stretch gotten injured that much. And he's putting up strong numbers. And whenever they sort of need him to ramp something up, he seems to be able to do it. There's power, there's elegance. It's just like the Nissan Aria. The 2023 Nissan Aria packs pin to your seat power and premium intelligence all in one EV. The all new, all electric 2023 Nissan Aria. The EV for people who love to drive. Shop now at NissanUSA.com. Yeah, shop there. All right. I don't know what to tell you. Our friends, the Orlando Magic. They are no longer my friend today because I needed Marco Fultz to play and they're sitting him. But I actually don't care that much. Um, it is a back to back for Orlando. So they decided for Thursday they are going to sit Bunkero, Wagner, Fultz, Carter, and Harris. Now, does that mean that they will sit on Friday against the Nets? Or will they all play and then Cole Anthony, Jalen Suggs, and yeah, other guys will sit? Bowl, bowl, maybe? Bowl's actually starting on Thursday. So I don't know what they're going to do. They are in that mix, that morass, who can go 5-9 to nine in lottery odds. Any win costs them. So they are sitting guys. So don't be shocked if these guys sit the rest of the way against Cleveland, Brooklyn, and Miami. Don't be surprised. The Nets are, are locked in at 6. Well, they're not 100% locked in. They are... 99% chance of finishing in the sixth seed, and they're going to win this game, meaning they will lock themselves in at six. For the Nets, there's no injuries to report apart from Ben Simmons. Royce O'Neal's been playing better. Well, that's not true. Finney Smith is pro, so he's going to return. Royce O'Neal's been playing pretty well. Is he worth a stream? That's very, very debatable. I don't think he's in an 11-game Friday. I'm not sure that he is. And then there's Joe Harris, who was great last game. and has played 15 and 20 minutes the last two games, but his minutes mixed with Curry's and Watanabe's and Thomas's and Sumner's are a little bit all over the place and not enough that I'd feel comfortable using them. But I think we've got to be very much on notice with a back-to-back that every Magic player or every useful Magic player has a possibility of sitting in this game. Again, they need to lose. The Raptors and the Celtics. Don't know what we're going to get out of this one. Um, the Raptors are basically locked in at the nine seed. They can potentially jump to the eight, but that will require the Hawks losing out. And it's not going to happen. They can't move down to the 10. So they are the nine. And the Celtics literally can't move. They are stuck in the number two seed. So the Celtics, there is big risks of rests coming here. Well, who they have listed on the injury report is all of their point guards. Derek White, Marcus Smart, Malcolm Brogdon, and Peyton Pritchard are all questionable. And you might not think that that matters, like they have Pritchard there, like who cares? But the fact that there's four point guards and all of them are questionable. So the guy that we want to watch is J.D. Davison. Because, again, that doesn't matter to them whether they win or lose. Brogdon's got an injury history. White's got an injury history. Smart's currently injured. I think there's a chance. All, and Peyton Pritchard's been injured for months. I think they all could sit. Meaning Davison's got to play and you're going to have Tatum and bloody Jalen Brown handling the ball or Al Horford playing point guard or whatever they're going to do. I'm surprised that Tatum, Brown, Horford, and, and Rob Williams are going to play in this game. They probably won't play Sunday. Almost definitely won't play Sunday. The Raptors, they don't really know what it means to take it easy. They played still 40 minutes to some of their starters yesterday, but they're, they're locked in. right Now, they do have games against the Celtics and the Bucks, but both of these teams aren't going to be trying the rest of the way. They just need one win and that locks them in at nine. But they also, oh, that's not true. They're locked in at nine. They cannot go lower than nine. They can potentially move up to eight, but they can't really. Nick Nurse is obviously insane and is probably not going to sit players, but there is a possibility. Gary Trent was piss poor last game. Will his minutes rise if they sit the starters? And then the other one to watch is Achua, if they sort of wrap Pirtle and Siakam and that in cotton wool. The other names that I would pay attention to are Malachi Flynn. I'd pay a little bit of attention to Will Barton and, of course, Chris Boucher. But a lot of this is going to be dependent on what they do with that lineup. And then the Celtics as well. Sam Hauser and J.D. Davison are the names that I'd watch along with Mike Muscala. But at this point, it looks like it's only the point guards who are in danger of sitting. The Sixers and the Hawks. The Sixers are locked in. They're number three. They're not moving from there. They are also on the second night of a back-to-back here, while the Hawks are basically locked in at number eight. They can they can move down to number nine if they lose both and the Raptors win both. There's a bee's dick chance of moving up to number seven if they win both and the Heat lose both. But you know, the likelihood of that happening is, is pretty low. So they're, they're basically locked in here at number eight. For the Sixers, 
In terms of injuries, they had listed Maxi and Melton and Tucker as questionable for Thursday. I would be absolutely flabbergasted if Harden, Embiid, Harris play on Friday. Stunned. I, no chance. There's no way this happens. Should I add that to my OnlyFans um, discount code? Use discount code Embiid doesn't play for 10% off. There's no way. And you got a chance at Melton and Maxi, and that's it as well. So we're looking at some of the bench players. Like we're looking at um, Paul Reed. We're looking at um, Shake Milton. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. We could be looking at the package, Jaden Springer. The package. We could be looking at Furkan Korkmaz. Korkmaz. We could be looking at Jalen McDaniels. A lot can go wrong here in terms of relying upon these top end sixes. For the Hawks, DeAndre Hunter is questionable after missing the last couple. I really don't think he's going to play here. With him out, you go Bay and you go a little bit more Bogdanovich. If Hunter plays, then Bay and Bogdanovich can be turfed pretty quickly. The one I want to watch, though, is Jalen Johnson, who's played 22 and 23 minutes. Yes, it helps that Hunter has been out, but he's also outplayed John Collins. And I'd be very interested to see whether they keep him in a 20-minute or night role or not. And then AJ Griffin's played over 20 the last two as well. Likely because Hunter is out, but I thought he was pretty good last game. So let's see what they do with him. This next game, wow, the second seed in the West, the first seed in the East, battling each other. Yeah, but also nah, because they're just not going to be needing to try because this is where we're at. Two games to go in the season, they are locked in. The Bucks are 100% locked in at the one seed. The Grizzlies are 93% locked in. At number two, they just need a win. Um, they don't have the tiebreaker over the Kings, and they're two games ahead of the Kings. So they just need to win. Uh, Memphis does one of their final two games, and then they lock in at the two seed. They play the Bucks, who are, aren't going to be trying, and then they do play the Thunder on Sunday. So that, that, that will be interesting. They'll be interesting to see what they do. Um, I would be... Look, Middleton's not going to play rest of the regular season. Grayson Allen's not going to play rest of the regular season. And I think that we should be putting questionable tags on all of the Bucks guys. Giannis, Holiday, um, Lopez, probably not. Portis, maybe Crowder, maybe Matthews. And you're going to have some weird stuff going on, I think. For the Memphis side of things, they've rested guys over their last back-to-back -back quite a bit. Jar, Kennard, uh, Tillman, and then Aldama got injured last game as well. So what they do, I, I don't know in terms of their rotation. Again, they do need to win a game, and I think that they'll be totally okay winning this one. But, you know, is that going to come? Like, are they going to play Kenny Lofton and David Roddy big minutes? Are they going to sit them all and play big minutes to their starters in this one and then save those other guys for Sunday against the Thunder? Um, is Tyus Jones going to be worthwhile if Jar plays? I, I do think that there's a chance that they play this, their majority of their guys in this game and then get the win, lock it in and sit everyone on Sunday. But I do want to see how or what they do with Lofton or Roddy in the situation where that isn't what they end up doing. For the Bucks, again, no no read. Why would you play Giannis? Why would you play Drew Holiday? So I'm looking at Javon Carter as a really interesting guy. Maybe Joe Ingles, but I'm looking at Javon Carter as a pretty interesting stream. Obviously, Bobby Portis. And then someone like a Marjon Beauchamp or an AJ Green or even bloody Lindell Wigington might be an option. I probably wouldn't be streaming Wigington. I'd consider Beauchamp, but they are guys, Carter's obviously the number one there. Uh, they are guys who are going to see, I think, increased run. Today's episode is brought to you by Fangio. The NBA playoffs are merc mercifully almost here. And now is the perfect time to download Fangio, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, it's secure, and it's super easy to use. And you can bet on everything. Money line, point spreads, game totals, individual player props. All of that is there at FanDuel. Let's look at FanDuel's Defensive Player of the Year award. Jaron Jackson is a favorite. Minus 165. I didn't think he'd be that favored. Brook is next, and that's basically a two-man race. Because then the odds go from to Adebayo to uh, the Koala, Evan Mobley. Giannis, Anthony Davis, but they're all like multiple thousands, like plus 45 for Bam, plus 6,500 for Mobley, plus 65 for Giannis. So it's between Jaron and Brooke. No mention of Draymond Green either in the uh, Defensive Player of the Year. But you can check all that out over at FanDuel and they even let you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss that chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets. When you go to fanjul.com slash locked on, that's fanjul.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with Fanjul, the an official sports betting partner of the NBA. And don't forget to gamble responsibly. The Knicks and the Pelicans is your next one. The Knicks are locked in at number five and they are nursing some injuries. The Pelicans can finish anywhere between fifth and ninth in the West. It's pretty unlikely they finish fifth, but their most likely finishing spot is ninth. There's still a chance they can finish eighth. I believe if they win out, they can they will finish eighth. 
Yeah. Which again, they're in the plan. It doesn't like five or six theoretically, but the bunch of teams ahead of them needs to lose every game. On the Knicks side of things, we know that the double royal Julius or oh, the, the Grizzlies have just made an update to their um injuries. Let's see what they did. Santi Aldama is doubtful and everyone else is off the injury report. So Aldama doubtful, meaning Roddy and Lofton are probably going to take his minutes. Probably Roddy, so he becomes more interesting. But everyone else, so it looks like they're going to go in and try to get this win against the Bucks. On the Knicks. Jalen Brunson, the burner, is out again. I don't think Brunson plays again in the regular season. Um, Randall's out, of course. And then Rowan Barrett is questionable with an illness. What we need for Obi Toppin to go big is for two starters to be out. We've got that. Anyone else out on top of that is a real bonus. Um, Thibodeau played Grimes 43 minutes in a game that didn't matter yesterday. He played quickly 40 minutes. He played Toppin 43 minutes in games that don't matter. So while we know who's in or out, I don't think there's going to be gigantic wholesale rest as much as it would make sense to get Trevor Keels out there for 40 minutes. I don't think we're going to get it. Toppin's a great option. Juice McBride in a deeper league. I hope they give him a few more. I am going to drop a deuce on everybody. Because I don't need to see 43 minutes of Grimes or quickly. It might be great if they're on your fantasy team, but it makes no sense to risk these important players playing every single game of, a, of matchups against the Pacers and the Pelicans. Yeah, it'd be great for the Pelicans. Like, that's competitive, but like, come on. We'll see what happens, but Tom, I don't think he's going to sit those guys. On the Pelicans, they just need to keep winning, so you're going to get good Herb Jones minutes, whether it's good production, I don't know. He was awesome last game, but that's not him. We're well aware that's not him. So we see what we get there. And then Valanciunas had some foul trouble in the last game, so that really reduced his production. Jonas Vassal Inuasas. He went from being this fantasy playoff savior where he's putting up just massive numbers, top 10 numbers for like two, three weeks. And now everything's dropped back to sort of, not quite, but sort of what it was earlier in the season. So let's see where his minutes end up settling. The next game is the Bulls and the Mavs. The Bulls are locked in at number 10. They cannot move from number 10. The Mavericks, we know, they can miss the playoffs. They can get in. The Their destiny is not in their hands. It's in the Thunder's hands. If the Thunder win out, the Mavericks cannot catch them. But... A Thunder loss and a Mavericks win switches the equation. And Dallas moves ahead here. And the Bulls aren't, they don't need to try. I thought that they might sit Vooch in this game. It's Vooch, it's big Vooch, Vooch is it. Vooch a bitch. They still might, but he's not on the injury report. But the rabbit hunter Alex Caruso is, the skater boy Zach Levine is. And DeMar DeRozan is as well. So the fact that they're listing them questionable, there's no reason for them to play at all. They will not play. I feel really confident in saying that Levine, Caruso, and DeRozan will not play in this game. Not as confident as I do in the Miles Turner stuff, but I still feel pretty confident that they are not going to play in this game. There is no reason for them to play in this game. Uh, DeRozan, Levine's had a bung knee for three years. DeRozan's had a thigh problem for four months. Caruso's had a foot problem for two months. It would be absolute malpractice. Oh, actually, what is the Bulls? Maybe malpractice is the name of the game there. It would be actual medical malpractice. Shout out to Lou Deng. Shout out to um, Jimmy Butler. Shout out to Jokum Noah. Shout out to Lonzo Ball. Shout out to Javante Green. It would be medical malpractice for these guys to play in this game. We'll see what they do. I want to watch if they give Dalen Terry minutes. He's a weird player. A rebound, assisting, steals guy who's a low usage point guard. But if DeRozan, Levine, Caruso are out, there are minutes there. And Kobe White could play 35 and score 35. With seven threes. Okay, I think there's a big opportunity for Kobe White if DeRozan and Levine are out. I don't know why you wouldn't sit Vooch, but that's a different story. On the Mavs, they obviously just need to keep winning. They do have Kyrie and Luka listed as probable. They are going to play. Don't worry about that. They're playing. I want to see what happens with Christian Wood. because He's played 27 and 25 minutes the last two games. Now, of course, the four prior was 17, 12, 12, and 13. As old mate Jason Kidd changes his mind uh, basically every day. And Jay, 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 listen to a Jason Kidd press conference. Like, okay, I get it. Media can be annoying. I, I know that. But it's the... I, I'd love to be in one of those press conferences. I probably wouldn't say anything because I'd be shit scared. But I'd love to be there, assuming my alter ego with gigantic balls is able to ask those questions. When someone asks him a question, hey, has this been a frustrating season? And Kidd's like, smugly, huh. oh, you didn't ask that question last season. Like, no shit, dickhead. No, oh, no, sorry, sorry. Sorry, let me rephrase. The question was... Um, how are you excited? Um, how are you feeling about bringing this group back for next season? It's like, you didn't ask that question last. It's like, no shit. You finished in the conference finals. There was no controversy. You weren't struggling. You weren't bad. Like, yes, yeah, no, I know we didn't ask it, Jason, because you were good then and you're bad now. How about you address the fact that you're terrible and you can't control your team? Does that make you excited to come back for next season? Yeah, I'd be kicked out straight away. That's cool. But it just, he's frustrating. He annoys me so much. He's back on my shit list of shit coaches. 
He had me fooled. He had me fooled last season. I thought, oh, maybe he's learned. No, he hasn't. He's bad. Anyway, that's a completely beyond the point. Christian Wood's getting good minutes, and we'll see whether that continues. And then Timmy Hardaway. We know that there's ups and downs with Tim. Look at the minutes. 36, bang. 41, bang, bang. 16, what? And then 37. Like, this is why we can't predict or rely upon this bloke at all. You're fine to use him. You're fine to have a crack with some points and threes, but bloody hell with Hardaway. It's just... It's so unpredictable in terms of what you're going to get from him, but also what Jason Kidd is going to allow him to give to you. It's frustrating, obviously. Warriors Kings. The Kings are locked in at three. Basically, they can move to two if the Grizzlies falter and the Kings win out. The Grizzlies just need to win one game. The Kings cannot move lower than three, though they are locked in there. And the Warriors are in that morass of teams, but the Clippers, Warriors, Lakers, Pelicans, Wolves, all those teams can change positions. So there's five between five to nine, they can all change positions. Wiggins is out and no other injuries to report. Clay Thompson's off the injury report, so he'll return. What happens with DiVincenzo? Because we'd seen a reduction in his playing time. He dropped way off. 19, 24, 19, 21, 23, 20. I mean, all right, drop him. 32, 32, despite coming off the bench in the last one. So I don't know what to make of that. Yes, the 32 when he came off the bench was with Clay Thompson out. But in the other games, everyone was healthy. So we back on DiVincenzo. I don't really know how to judge that. And the same with Kaminga, whose minutes have been all over the place. 20, 23, 27, 31, 15, 16, 30, 26, 30. Doesn't matter if he starts or comes off the bench. It's all over the shop. It's very hard to rely on them. I would prefer DiVincenzo to Kaminga, but the uncertainty is a real problem. And you want to talk about uncertainty. What about the King's guards? That sounds like it's something from Game of Thrones, but I'm talking about Malik Monk and Kevin Herter. Herder, 32, 22, 32, 22, 21, 27. That's his last six games. 38, 32, if you want to go back eight games ago. All right, that's cool. That makes no sense. And then Malik Monk. Well, Malik Monk's productions are actually... Actually, now look at it. His production's been all right. 24, 23, 25, 22, 27. Oh, yeah, 19, 17. It's more that his in-game production versus his role can be a little bit fluky. Do we trust these guys? Not really. But they are still absolutely in the mix because... What else are we relying upon? Trevor Keels? Juice McBride? Like, I feel okay about them, but Herder can do, like, nothing. Really comfortably. Malik Monk can be actively negative towards your fantasy team. It is really hard to rely upon those players. And then the last game. I think it's the last game. Yeah. It's the Suns and the Lakers. This is a back-to-back -back for Phoenix. They are locked in at four. Absolutely locked in. There is no report of them resting anybody on Thursday. Why they would play Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, Chris Paul on a back-to-back -back on Friday when nothing matters is, would be insane. The only reason you think of there is some sort of continuity, but it's a back-to-back, -back, mate. Play Thursday, play Sunday, that is it. Expect Paul, Booker, Durant, probably Aiton to all sit, would be my guess, on Friday against the Lakers. The Lakers, they need to keep winning. They're like the Warriors in that 5-9 to nine mix. They'd love to get into 6 or 5 because you know, losing to the Clippers hurts them. But they would love to get into that position. Their most likely finishing spot now, though, after losing to the Clippers, is the eighth spot. They need some results to go their way to jump higher than that. So they had a chance to get into that sixth spot. They still can, but they need um, the Warriors or the Clippers to lose some games to push up. On the, the the Suns, let's wait and see on their status, but you might be getting a Landry Shamak game. You might be getting an Akogi game. You're probably getting a TJ Warren game, and you might be getting a Bismack Biombo game. Watch that one. For the Lakers, there's not really a huge amount I want to watch. Jared Vanderbilt's not really a 12-team league guy. And I also want to watch D'Angelo Russell, but more the minute split between him and Schroeder because he played almost 40 minutes last game while Schroeder played 13. And obviously, we can't rely upon Schroeder if he's playing 13. We can't rely upon him really unless Russell is out. But that's a lot of minutes first game back for D'Angelo Russell. So let's see how they decide to use him. Now, I've got a preemptive streaming list for Friday, but things can change. Obviously, you can check out daily projections on Basketball Monster to see where some streamers line up. Um, these guys are all available in 50% plus of Yahoo leagues. Uh, Mark Williams, Jalen Duran, a little bit of an asterisk on Duran, depending on what happens with Bagley. Jordan Goodwin, a little bit of an asterisk there as well because Dylan Wright's off the injury report. Corey Kispert, Jordan Wara, Tari Eason, Andrew Nempard, John Davis. And there's going to be some other guys that jump into that list. In terms of deeper league guys, and even some of these deeper league guys, I think are 12 teamers. Like Svima Luke is a 12 team league guy. I think Jay Huff is a 12 team league guy. Kendrick Nunn, I'm not so sure about. Quentin Jackson, probably not with the return of Delon. Teo Maladon's probably a 12-team league guy. Obi Toppin's a 12-team league guy with the absence now of Brunson. The God of Hammers, JT Thor. We know each other. He's a friend from work. He's probably still a deeper league, same as James Booknight. 
And for points leagues, available in 40% of leagues, we've got Mark Williams, Benedict Matherin, Marvin Bagley, uh, Johnny Davis, Killian Hayes, Jordan Norris, Fima Luke, and Jordy Goodwin as some pretty solid stream options. And guys, no need for me to do chunks. There's three days left. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Every team plays on Sunday. Every team. So that'll do it for us. Guys, don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. And if you legends are still watching this show and your fantasy league's finished, well, you're the best and I love you. Hit thumbs up on the video. Leave your comments down below, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.